What is up YouTube, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys an updated version of my Magic and Nightblade PvP build, the Blood Mage. So for those of you who do not know, who have not seen this build before, this is a tanky Magic and Nightblade setup, focusing really heavy on crit resistance and minor maim as a way to make your tanky, but you do not lack in the damage department. As you can see from my stat sheet, I am sitting at 2200 spell damage, so this build still does pack a very good punch. I do just want to say, a lot of people have been asking me for a while to update this build, Guys, this has been updated since Clockwork City came out. This build's been updated on my website, dotsgaming.com, just like all of my builds are. Just because it wasn't updated here on YouTube does not mean it wasn't updated at all. But I will start keeping up with the build videos a little bit more, especially with my, you know, with my build videos to make sure that they're updated here on YouTube and on the website so that you guys could either choose to watch it here or read it on the site but before i get into the build though i need to start putting this disclaimer before my builds can get into a point where you know this is beginning to occur more pvp builds especially are very personal you guys need to keep that in mind just because this build i put this out here this works for me right if you play it and it doesn't work for you. It doesn't mean the build's bad. It doesn't mean I suck. It just means that maybe that build's not conducive to your play style. Maybe that build's not the greatest, you know, how you play your character. This is just what I play, what I prefer, what works for me. If you don't like something about the CP allocation, if you don't like something about the enchants, if you don't like a gear set, please change it to fit your play style or what you think would be better for your character. This is just what worked for me. A lot of play testing has gone into this build. I've I've dueled with it. I've done PGs. I've done open world. And this is my favorite Magic and Nightblade PvP build when I do play on my Magblade. It is what works best for me. So you could take that for what it is. But moving into the actual video, guys, let's start off with our gear sets. Now, I have all of the correct traits except for one, so my head is Divines, but it should be impenetrable. But we are going to be rocking two pieces of Valken Scoria. Valken Scoria is going to give us a big HP boost to make us even tankier, but the main reason I like Scoria is because it gives us a ranged nuke that has a chance to proc on dots granted we do not we do not run that many dots in the build but i've still had no problem to get scoria to proc it, i don't think you really need that many dots running that we do have a couple things that do count as one uh so we have enough to get this to proc enough that i think it is still worth running over any other monster set and through testing the other ones this one is still my favorite and then we have Jerkin of Transmutation. So we run Transmutation on the back bar. Transmutation gives us plenty of magic recovery and is a way for us to get some good sustain. But what I like about this is that when you heal a target, you gain about 1259 crit resist for 20 seconds. That's a really long buff. So if you're on your back bar and you, and you use any heal on yourself, and we run plenty of hots in this build, so you're constantly healing yourself... This will proc on you, giving you all the crit resist, so then you can go on your front bar and take advantage of all that crit resist, because that is a huge buff. 20 seconds is a very, very long time. The other set that we use is Wizard's Repost, which gives us a line of health, spell damage, magic recovery, and then when we take any sort of critical damage, we apply Minor Maim to the enemy for 15 seconds, reducing their damage down by 15%. So as you can see, guys, this build is going to be very hard to get bursted down by crit damage. When someone crits you, we already have all that crit resist up from Chains Mutation, and they are going to get Minor Maim on them. So you are very, very tanky in this build, which is what I like. I always like to play setups that while they can still deal rate damage i always like to be a little bit tankier simply because i like to play up in the fray in the shit uh getting in people's face and i like to play relatively aggressive so for me i like to have builds that are a little bit more on the tanky side now in terms of the gear we do go full magicka enchants being that you know the gear choices are a little bit defensive in nature i do try to go full on magicka to give us as much damage and as big of a resource pool as possible and then on our necklace our uh, jewelry excuse me of course we are going to go um all arcane 
all spell damage again because we have plenty of recovery and plenty of defensive capability from our gear i can afford to go very aggressive on my enchant and go with the spell damage in terms of our weapon we do use a sh i still have a sharpened inferno staff on my front bar that i still think works pretty well um, if you do not like sharpened you can go infused regardless i would still use the weapon damage enchant um but like I said, if you feel like Infused will be better for you, you can go Infused. If you do not, you can go Sharpened. I, I just, I still use Sharpened. I still have good success with it, but I don't really think, you know, I think it's down to personal preference with that. And then the back bar enchant, I still use defending. Uh, I mean, trait, I still use defending. But in terms of the enchant, enchant on the back bar is is kind of up to you. You really could use poisons back here, cost increased poisons for magic and stamina. But if you don't want to use poisons, there's a lot of different things you could do back here from oblivion to absorb stamina to absorb magic. I really think there's not really, there's not really a one like best enchant for this back bar here you could even try maybe going shock uh or you could even stick this the weapon damage and spell damage back here and put a shock enchant up here there's a lot you can do with the enchants i'll leave it up to you guys to figure out what you really want to run but i ran used to run poisons on my back bar and i would run weapon and spell damage on my front bar so that's basically it in terms of gear I like this setup. I've tested it a lot. It works very well for me, and that is currently what I am using. Now, in terms of our ability selection, we have Swallow Soul. Swallow Soul is the bread and butter. Bread and butter damage, heal, minor vitality, cheap costing. It is a fantastic spam. Well, keep in mind, it is a little bit of a bitch to weave light attacks with Swallow Soul, so you're going to really need to pay attention to it, especially because this build relies on weaving very heavily. So you need to really be in your game when it comes to weaving with Swallow Soul. So that's going to be something that takes a little bit of practice. We run Degeneration as our form of major sorcery. I also like Degeneration over Structured Entropy because we are using a Destruction Staff. Our light and heavy attacks will deal some decent damage, so we will get a decent heal if that procs from Degeneration. Then Merciless Resolve, the ability that the Magic and Nightblade build will play around basically for Burst, is Merciless Resolve. So after five light or heavy attacks... We can shoot the Spectral Bow, which will deal a crap ton of damage and reduce their movement speed by 40% for 3 seconds. And we also gain Minor Berserk for 20 seconds. Maintain this buff at all times. If you let this buff fall off, and if you're not constantly trying to proc your Spectral Bow, your damage will go to crap. So please make sure to keep this up at all times. I also run Elemental Drain on this build as a way to not only get Major Breach, but as a way to have a Destruction Staff ability on my front bar and give us Minor Magicka Steel. So with this build, I really do not have any resource problems. I know you guys are probably going to think I go a little bit recovery heavy, and I just may, but for me, it's the way I liked to play when I played my Nightblade a lot in PvE, uh, PvP. Excuse me, I liked to go really heavy on my recovery um, just because I, I felt like for the way I played and it just worked best for me. But anyway, Elemental Drain was what I'm using on my front bar. If you do not feel like you need this much sustain, you can maybe try replacing this with something else. But I highly recommend Ellie Drain because Major Breach is just badass. And the Magic of Steel is just the cherry on top. And it costs nothing, so it's really nice. I'm still using Mass Hysteria for my fear. I know some people might not like that. I still like it. Uh, I know the Minor Mame kind of kind of goes to waste on this ability but we still have the movement speed reduction we still have two opponents being feared and not just one so that is why i do still like using mass hysteria if you do not want to use mass hysteria what you know you could put clench in and then possibly sub out ellie drain for something else but i still like mass hysteria elemental drain i think it worked best for me so that's what i'd recommend using now, the big change from the last build to this one is Soul Assault. Now, keep in mind, my Soul Assault is only rank 1, so the tooltip is going to be a bit lower than uh, the fully uh, leveled up tooltip. But this ability is ridiculous, man. I used to run Incapacitating Strike, but with Soul Assault getting as buffed as it was, it's just so good. You know, if you can combo Merciless Resolve Soul Assault, you're, you're going to be dealing some heavy heavy damage to your target so don't just waste this though save it for a clutch moment because if you can save it for like when your target shields are down and when you have them on the back foot 
you're you're going to you're going to win that fight 100%. You know, it's not going to be a fight you lose cuz this ability just hits so hard and it keeps them slowed, so it's a really big bitch to break this. I also do not think I've heard a couple people say, "Oh, just walk up to the guy with soul assault and you could bash him." I do not believe soul assault can be bashed. I've tried in my DK to bash people using soul assault and it did not work. So I don't know if that was just something with that encounter or if Soul Assault cannot be bashed, but I'm not entirely sure it can be. So I think you need to LOS this in order to, to break it, which is a kind of a pain because it has a 70% slow. So just keep that in mind if you're on the receiving end of a Soul Assault that is, uh, you got to try to, I think, LOS. I, I don't think bashing works, but you know you could always experiment and try and see. Like I said, the one time I tried it, it did not work, but that could have just been a weird encounter on my part. Now, on the back bar, we have Refreshing Path. Refreshing Path is for our major expedition. It's a little bit of dot damage, and it gives us a big heal. So like I said, we're going to be running a lot of hots, a lot of healing in this build, um, just to keep ourselves topped off. So we already have one through Swallow Soul, one through Degeneration, and now this is our third one with Refreshing Path. It's just a really, really good ability. You want to try to fight in your path, if at all possible. Now, Shadowy Disguise. I use Shadowy Disguise in duels and battlegrounds, and I know you might be thinking, why do you use Shadowy Disguise in duels? I cannot tell you, if, if you get good at this, you can really use Shadowy Disguise to your advantage. There were so many times where I'd be dueling other Magic and Nightblades, and when they would fire off their Spectral Bow, when I heard the animation for the Spectral Bow firing off, you just cloak, and it'll miss. So you can cloak key abilities done by your opponent. So that is definitely something that takes a lot of practice, but it is something that I really enjoy doing. I do not think in Open World Cyrodiil, though, you need this. I think you'd be better off in Open World running Elusive Mist, because it'll give you a, uh, you'll be able to break roots and you'll be able to get away. But if you are in a close quarters fight like Battlegrounds or Dueling, I think Shadowy Disguise is going to be more advantageous. Now, we have Siphoning Attacks. Again, more sustain. Just so much more sustain. But I also like the fact that it heals. It's just another heal in the build just makes us even tankier even tankier even tankier and yeah this is really not much to this man this is a really good ability like i said i think just the sustain and, and healing it offers is just too good to pass up now we also have mirage now mirage is going to give us major evasion minor resolve minor ward increasing our dodge chance by 15 percent and increasing our physical and spell resistance by 13 20 for a whopping 26 seconds this ability is just so good it just makes us so tanky it is just badass, and I highly, highly recommend using it. And then, of course, Healing Ward, the bread and butter of the Restoration Staff. It is our damage shield. It is another heal in the build. It is just too good to not use. And then, of course, our back bar alt is the 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 king from the Resto Staff line is Light's Champion, which is our my I'm never going to die, haha, -ha button. So just simply pop this, and you're going to get major force, major protection, and a really, really bomb hot so it's just such a good ability. I highly recommend having it on your back bar. So as you can see, guys, in terms of heals, we run one, two, three, four, five, six different forms of healing. We also have Mirage. We are tanky as hell in this build. And I know there are some of you out there thinking you don't have the damage. You probably don't have the damage. You probably don't have the damage. You do. Trust me, you do. You are running unbuffed. 2200 spell damage roughly roughly 2200 unbuffed spell damage it's going to go down ever so slightly once i lose that piece of divines but that's unbuffed and you also have your major sorcery to think about you have major breach so you're going to still deal so much damage this this setup especially for dueling i think i've only really faced a couple people in duels that they're just they were just sheerly better skilled players than me and I didn't win because they just outskilled me but what I otherwise if like they weren't like way above my skill level I've never lost a duel in this build this build is just so so strong and honestly once you learn the defensive capabilities of this build it's going to be really tough to kill you let me tell you it's definitely it's going to be really really hard to kill you but trust me it still does sport enough damage that was the main criticism I've gotten about the build in the past but from my experiences my damage was perfectly fine 
Now, in terms of other stuff, we are running the Apprentice for increased spell damage. It just gives us it's the highest parsing Munda Stone, so it's what we're going to use for more spell damage. We are a Vampire. We're going to want to be Stage 4, though. That is something to keep in mind. You do want to be Stage 4. I'm at Stage 2 right now from still doing VMA. And then we are using the Witch Mother's Potent Brew. If you feel like you have too much recovery, if you look at this build and go, Dots Gaming, you have way too much recovery in this build. Please, God, fix this. I don't need that much recovery. What I'd recommend doing is still running the gear setup and the and the ability layout that I have, but replace Witch Mothers with Tristat Food. So Tristat Food is going to be really, really good for you to even buff up your stamina pool you know, for, for CC breaking and dodge rolling. So that is definitely something I'd recommend if you are playing this build and you feel like you have way too much recovery is replace Witch Mothers with the long fin pasty with melon sauce. And I think that that'll make up for, for the extra recovery if you feel like you have too much. Now I covered uh, Mundus. In terms of potions, I used the movability potions that also restored uh, health and magicka. You could really use any potion you want as long as it has some sort of magic or restoration component to it uh so i re really it's up to you guys to pick and choose what you want to use i like i said i use the movability pots but that was what my personal choice was and then in terms of the stat sheet um keep in mind it does say that we have the emperorship bonus even though i checked and in this campaign we do not have emperor at the time um so i don't know if this is my exact health or if it's a raise slightly by one or two k i think it might be raised slightly because that does seem a little high I think it's supposed to be more between 24 and 25k, but just keep that in mind when you're looking at the stat sheet. So we are rocking about 35.6k Magicka, 26k health with the possibility of the Emperor bonus. So we could let's just say 24 to 25k health. We have a 10k max Stam, uh, 2k Magicka recovery, uh, tw about 2200 spell damage, 37.6 spell critical, uh, 11,000 spell resist, 9,400 sp uh, physical resistance, and then 1,500 critical resistance. I know some of you are probably looking at it going, Dots Gaming, that's a little low for the crit resist. Well, do not forget, my friends, we are getting another 1,259 from Transmutation. So that's putting us right in that sweet spot zone between 2 and 3K, which I usually try to play with. I try to play with between 2 to 3K uh, crit resist on all my characters. Uh, we also run, obviously, all of our attributes into Magicka. And then in terms of our race, I'd say the two races that I recommend are High Elf and Dark Elf. Uh, I think that with this build, you have so much sustain that I don't think Argonian is necessary. So I would rather go with the higher damage from High Elf and Dark Elf. I am not sure which race parses the best. You know, we're talking very, like relatively small percentages here, but I don't think there really is much of a difference between High Elf or Dark Elf. I think Dark Elf's going to net you a bit better damage. Uh, I believe will net you a bit better damage, but I think that High Elf will give you a better overall pool in terms of the you know the balance between recovery and damage again if you feel like this build is too much recovery for you choosing dark elf over high elf is definitely something you can do but i still i like high elf for the build and like i said if you think there's too much recovery you could always increase uh change witch mothers to a different type of food but i'll leave that up to you guys to decide this is just what i personally ran with success now in terms of champion points i'm obviously as you can see cp 475 currently so I don't have a full champion point sheet, but I'm just going to read off my my uh, projected champion point sheet from my website, and I'm also going to show an image on the screen right now. So we are going to go 72 points in an Elfborn, 21 points in a Spell Erosion, 56 points in Elemental Expert, and 81 points in Mastered Arms. The reason I do that is because we are focusing on direct damage and bursting down a target with a combo between Merciless Resolve, Valken Scoria, and Soul Assault. So I want to go as big as I can into my direct damage my magic damage, and my crits for when I get them. In terms of our green tree, we have 72 points in a Warlord, 64 points in Arcanist, 23 points in Tumbling, 52 points in a Mooncalf, and 19 into Siphoner. If, again, you feel like you have too much recovery in this build and you like the Witch Mother's Potent Brew, you could always take points out of Arcanist and put them into other spots. Uh, I would, you know, other places that I'd recommend are Siphoner. Siphoner is so good in this patch, and because we weave a lot, it's really, really good, I think, for this build. Uh, so you could pump up Siphoner even more. You could pump up tumbling even more to help with your uh with your stamina recovery there's a lot of different things you can do with the green tree this is what i projected using but 
Champion points are so customizable, you could really change this up however you want to fit your type of playstyle and what you think would be best. Now, in terms of our red tree, we have 81 points in Ironclad to counteract everyone else's Master at Arms, 40 points in Thick Skin, 43 into Elemental Defender, 43 into Hardy, and then 23 into Bastion to make our Healing Ward even bigger. But I'm pretty sure that's it, guys. That is basically the build. I liked this build when I first started playing my Magblade, because Magblade really is not the easiest class in the game to play. I'll tell you guys straight up, Magblade has a really high skill floor, at least from my experiences, like, especially in open world. It is, it is a fun class, it is a good class, especially it's really strong in 1v1s, but it definitely takes some getting used to being that Merciless Resolve is kind of a bitch to play with sometimes. Uh, counting your light attacks can be kind of annoying, especially if you're on your back bar, but once you get used to it, once you get better at it, it really is, it's just, it's such a good nuke, it's such a good ability, and with time this build is really going to suit you well. It's really going to play well. For me, this was my the easiest build for me to learn on. This was the build that I learned how to really play my Magic and I played it in PvP on and is what I used basically the whole time I played. I did try some other builds from time to time, tried some DW builds, tried some other Destro Resto builds, but I always found myself coming back to my safety blanket with this build because I just it felt the most natural to me and it felt the best of my playstyle. Again, if you look at this and go dots gaming, you have 2k recovery. You do not need to also run Ellie Drain and siphoning attacks. What I'd recommend doing is like I said, get rid of Witch Mothers, run long for pace with melon sauce instead, and you might find yourself having a bit more of a balanced sheet. If you but I, I recommend trying it with Witch Mothers. If you don't like it, like I said, you could always change. But for me, running the, the high recovery on this build worked really, really well because I never, ever, ever had to worry about my resource pool, regardless of the number of people I was fighting. And that to me was a very, very important thing. But that's it for the build today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you all try this out. It's a lot of fun and I definitely recommend it. If you like this build video and you want to see more content like this from me in the future, please hit that thumbs up. And to always be notified from when I'm doing things here on YouTube, you gotta subscribe and hit that bell so that you get push notifications to your phone. I do stream here on YouTube, but doing a lot of PvP recently. More on the DK though nowadays, and, the, and less on my Magblade. Uh, but if you want to just come by, hang out, and chill, see some cool PvP action, by all means, please stop by the stream. But thank you all guys so much for watching. I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next one.